What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube and today we are in the brand new, the all new 2022 Hyundai Ioniq 5 courtesy of Jack G and Volvo Hyundai in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. This thing is super quiet. This is an all new, all electric model from Hyundai. Of course, it comes with America's best warranty. That means being five years, 60,000 mile bumper to bumper, 10 years, 100,000 miles on the powertrain and that actually includes the battery as well in case anybody was wondering about the battery's warranty it falls under the powertrain warranty by Hyundai you also get three years or 36,000 miles of complimentary maintenance which is always good but ultimately in this video we'll be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering fill ride quality sound system all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always Let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2022 Ionic 5. First one being the SE standard range, starting at $39,700. By the way, that's a rear wheel drive configuration only. SE, which actually is the one we have today, $43,650. SEL for $45,900. And lastly, the limited, starting at $50,600. Now, all of those trims I just mentioned were standard rear wheel drive. You can add all wheel drive to any of them, but that first one, um, if you wanted to add all-wheel drive to the middle two trims, add $3,500. If you wanted to add all-wheel drive to the limited, add $3,900. And of course, to go along with that, you do have the availability of the $7,500 federal tax credit here in the U.S. as well. So meaning if you owe the government $7,500 at the end of the year, that gets wiped clean. So that is pretty cool. But anyways, the way the power is set up here on the Ionic 5, essentially there's two different configurations. You got the rear-wheel drive setup and the all-wheel drive setup. That's how they're going to differ. And so with the rear-wheel drive configuration, you're going to get a rear-mounted electric motor putting out 225 horsepower, 258 pound-feet of torque. Again, sent to the rear wheel. Zero to 60 time is going to come in at approximately 7.2 seconds there, with the range coming into the very impressive 300 miles. And since we're on the charging here, there's actually a two-way charging port, so you could charge other things as well, including like TVs or appliances or even another EV in the case of an emergency. Let's say another EV dies on the side of the road. You can actually use your Ionic 5 to help charge them back up so they can get to a charging station which i think is pretty cool i like that but also hyundai has teamed up with electrify america giving you two years of complimentary free charging as well which is pretty darn cool but so then the other engine configuration is going to belong to the all-wheel drive setup that one is the one that we have today that puts out 320 horsepower 446 pound feet of torque you gotta love the torque numbers on electric vehicles i swear sent to all four wheels zero to 60 time is going to come in at approximately 5.1 seconds which you guys know we will test out here in a little bit range is going to come in at 269 miles however we do have 287 miles showing up on my uh infotainment screen here so maybe that number's a little off i don't know but so anyways it was we were still sitting here at this red light when it comes to the drive modes there's actually a drive mode button located on the steering wheel itself which i think is pretty cool that will include eco normal sport and snow and uh the way you get the snow mode is you simply hold in that drive mode button for a little bit longer but essentially that will adjust things like the gauge cluster colors or configuration the ac performance the acceleration the braking characteristics and also the steering feel i can tell as well it definitely provides a bit heavier of a steering feel when you get it in that sport driving mode so that is wonderful i like the uh, different adjustability there and i'm telling you guys the acceleration is heavily adjustable depending upon which drive mode that you put it in which is pretty cool but anyways Having now gotten all of that out of the way, before we do the acceleration test, I wanted to mention to you guys that there are paddle shifters. They are not used for what paddle shifters traditionally are used for. They're actually used for the regenerative braking uh, characteristics. So you can adjust that based on uh, the paddle shifters. So essentially you can more or less put it in that one pedal driving mode by just playing around with the paddle shifters. But anyways, having now gotten all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put it in sport driving mode. And let's put the acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2022 Hyundai Ionic 5 here up to speed. There we go. Oh gosh, oh my gosh. Oh, oh my gosh. Whoa, this thing is so sick. Oh my gosh, that was wonderful. Wow, this thing is a freaking rocket. You know, zero to six, oh my gosh, my stomach is still feeling it. Zero to 60 in 5.1 seconds, let me tell you guys feels 100% different in let's say a Ford Mustang than it would in an Ionic 5 or any electric vehicle for that matter. That, that was breathtaking, literally. It took my breath away. 
That was nuts. I love the acceleration. That was nuts. I freaking love the acceleration on this thing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was cool. Anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 12.8 inch ventilated front disc in the back, 12.8 inch solid rear disc. As far as that braking feel goes, honestly, it's wonderful. It leans a little bit more on the heavier, or on the heavier side, the firmer side of things. So it does instantly bring you to a stop. I love the braking feel in this thing. It's not a soft braking feel, which I honestly kind of expected, especially with this being an electric vehicle, because typically the braking feel in all electric vehicles are typically complete crap if I'm being honest, but it actually feels really good in this thing. So well done Hyundai. I didn't expect that if I'm being honest, but anyways, then touching on suspension and handling up front, you will get a McPherson strut front suspension in the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear high performance dampers. As far as ride quality goes, it's been excellent. Like the ride quality in this thing is absolutely wonderful here. Here's the speed bump right here. You guys got it on GoPro here. It's great. Honestly, it's great. Like the ride quality is super smooth in the Ionic 5 without a doubt. Uh, as far as cabin noise goes, you guys can probably tell it's super quiet. It's an electric vehicle. You, ugh. It's an electric vehicle. You don't have that engine noise or exhaust drone or anything like that coming into the cabin, which is, I don't know, kind of refreshing for a little bit something different there than, I don't know, get some typically used to. As far as steering feel goes, it does make a pretty substantial difference depending upon which drive mode that you put it in. Like I said, if you put it in that sport driving mode, it instantly firms up that steering, gives you a heavier steering feel. So I personally appreciate that. Having said that, even in that sport driving mode, it's not maybe as heavy as I would want it to be. I would say, okay, just a little constructive criticism, Hyundai. Look at the Tesla Model Y maybe, because that is the competitor to this thing. As far as steering feel goes, the Tesla Model Y kills it. One of the best steering feels I've ever experienced, but wouldn't have minded if they, uh, I don't know, made it a little heavier of a weight to the steering, I guess, in the Ionic 5. And as far as visibility goes, I can see 100% perfectly fine out the back. Definitely not going to have any issues there. And I did want to mention there is an available head-up display. We don't have it today, but it is going to be there if you wanted that as well. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Hyundai Ioniq 5. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2022 Hyundai Ioniq 5 finished in digital teal. Very cool name for an exterior color, especially considering all the uh, pixelated effects going on within the Ioniq 5. And we'll cover that as we go here, but interesting little fact, this is about the same size as the Hyundai Tucson, but with a longer wheelbase than the Hyundai Palisade because of the new architecture, the new platform that the Ioniq 5 is built on, which is kind of interesting. I don't know, fun little fact for you guys. Let's go ahead and start up front on this one though. Retro futuristic look, and I'll cover that as we go, of course, but retro being all the pixelated effects that you guys can see it really does remind me of that uh if you guys saw that movie pixel with uh pac-man and all of that it's like a throwback to that i can definitely see this car being in that movie but anyways clamshell hood for fewer panel gaps you guys could probably see that i always liked clamshell hoods i feel like audi and porsche uses that design quite often pixel inspired led headlights of course you guys can see those up there they do come with the automatic feature as well as automatic high beams meaning when you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim those back to low beams then when that vehicle is gone it's going to bump it back up to high beams then for you if you were to go with the SEL or the limited you will get full led headlights but you still get led headlights either way but not the full leds unless you go with those two trims led daytime running lights you do have some available signature lighting below the front grill although we don't have it today <laughs> active grill shutters that assist with airflow and to help cool the batteries as well that does come standard and there are some front parking sensors that are available but again we don't have them here today but overall very nice looking front end but that pretty much rounds out the front end so let's go ahead and make our way to the side of the ionic 5 here all right and so now since we are around to the side of this one black window surrounds do come standard z-shaped creases in the side profile i think you guys can kind of see that it's a backward z but still a z nonetheless and that looks pretty darn good body colored power adjustable side mirrors do come standard they will be heated with led integrated turn signals and they're actually going to be power folding as well which is pretty darn cool you're either going to get black or silver side skirts depending upon which trim level that you go with we do have the black of course down there and 20 inch unique alloy wheels do come standard for every single trim level and they are going to differ in design slightly dependent upon the trim but they are 20 inches no matter what which is pretty darn cool and you do have those flush door handles as well so they kind of tuck into the door when you're actually
actually driving, but then when you're not driving, they uh, fold out till you lock the vehicle at least, and then uh, they'll fold back in once you start driving. But another cool thing, you guys can see the creases just above the uh, wheel wells here. This is another thing that uh, I just noticed, which is a cool little design element. So I wanted to point that out, but that pretty much rounds out the side of the Ionic here. Let's go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, as I am stepping on the ice, we are around back here. I do want to first mention that rear spoiler. Let me actually get a little bit closer so you guys can see. It is a twin design rear spoiler with an integrated breaker light. So there's kind of two sections to it. I definitely like that. You do, of course, have those pixel designed LED taillights. You got the Ionic 5 lettering finished in white in between those taillights. And there are some silver rear bumper accents towards the bottom there. And of course, no exhaust clips. So having said that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and make our way to the cargo area now. All right, you guys. And so now since we are around back of the Ionic 5, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a manual tailgate if you were to go with any of the SE trim levels. However, if you were to jump up to the SEL or limited, it is going to be a hands-free power tailgate. So it's going to be how you're going to go ahead and open that up. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 27.2 cubic feet behind that second row. If you needed more space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 59.3 cubic feet. Did want to also mention though, there is some cargo lighting back there. There is a 12 volt power outlet. There are four cargo tie down anchors as well, which is pretty cool to find. And if you were to lift up underneath of that floor of the cargo area, you will find a little bit of in-floor storage. And speaking of, there's a little bit more storage, not a ton, but there's a little more storage underneath the hood, underneath the clamshell hood of the Ionic 5 as well. If you were to lift up underneath that uh, EV cover, I guess you could say. Not a ton, but a little bit of storage there as well. But anyways, then making our way up to the rear legroom, that is going to come in at 39.4 inches. So for reference, I'm in even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. So plenty of space for me. Rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard reclining rear seats, also coming standard, which is pretty cool. The meaning the rear passengers can lay back a little bit there. There is uh, dual USB charging ports back there. There's a little bit of storage, but that pretty much rounds out the back seats, quite honestly. So let's go ahead and make our way to the front seats. Cloth seating is going to come standard for the SE trim levels. Leatherette seating coming with the SEL and limited trims. Heated front seats coming with the SE trim level and up. There is that Ionic logo found within the seating. Really, the Ionic logo is just pixels. That's kind of their thing as far as uh, what the logo is. So you're going to find some pixel design towards the upper portion of those seats. And those seats, by the way, are power adjustable on even our SE trim level that we have today with power lumbar as well. So definitely easy to find your perfect driving position with that. So that was definitely nice as well. And overall, it did make the seats plenty comfortable because of those adjustments. But then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. However, I do wish it would have telescoped out a little bit further uh, especially for maybe a six foot adult or taller uh, just makes uh driving position would be a little better if it telescoped out a little bit further that's all i'm saying leather wrap steering wheel does come standard for all trim levels it will be heated for the sel trim level and the limited and of course you have those four pixels within the center of the steering wheel and yes i actually had car confections ask hyundai for me about the uh, steering wheel having a lack of a Hyundai logo and what they were told essentially is that those four pixels kind of are the logo. So little shout out to them in this video, but that's what that is there for. But anyways, let's now go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Hyundai logo on the one side when you flip it over, lock, unlock, and there's a remote start actually that comes standard as well. There's also a uh, push button start that comes standard across the board. There is a digital key, so you simply just download the Hyundai app and then you have a key through your phone. So you really never even need the physical key if you wanted to go that route. I actually have that on my Hyundai Sonata as well. It's pretty cool. But then you got the button to pop the uh, charging port as well on the key there. But essentially, it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot in the brake and press that engine start button located just to the left of the climate control information there. And so once started up, it is a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster that comes standard for every single trim level across the board. Like I said, it will adjust just slightly dependent upon which drive mode that you put it in and it will also adjust the range the miles or the range that you have left so if i were to put it in eco it gives me a certain mileage if it were to put it in a normal or sport it's going to reduce that mileage because obviously you're going to get more of a range if you leave it in eco mode so i do want to do want to mention that but anyways you can adjust what is on there using the steering wheel mounted controls found on the left and the right hand side including really adjusting the entire look which is kind of cool so i really like that the gauge 
inches are done pretty darn well within the uh, within the Ionic 5 here. Then making our way to overall interior quality. If you're looking for a panoramic sunroof, go with the limited trim level. That's how you're going to get that. LED interior lighting with a nice little fade feature does come standard as well ambient interior lighting coming with the SEL and limited trim levels. Wireless phone charger again coming with the SEL and limited trim levels as well. There is a magnetic dashboard that is going to come on the upper trim levels. Unfortunately, we don't have that, so I can't show it to you guys today, but essentially just to the left of the uh, gauge cluster, at least if you're here in the US. If you're overseas, it's gonna be just to the right because your steering wheel is on the right side, of course. And since this is an electric vehicle, there's a completely flat floor here in the front, so I found that was pretty interesting there's a 12 volt power outlet up there there's a usb charging port a little bit of storage just behind that you have dual cup holders two more usb charging ports a little bit more storage yet again and within this center armrest there's uh even more storage so definitely plenty of storage here in the ionic 5 without a doubt but so then now making our way to the infotainment screen there is a 12.3 inch color touch screen display to match the 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster which makes perfect sense to me bluetooth and audio streaming does come standard Standard Android Auto Apple CarPlay but factory navigation system you guys also coming standard on every single trim level so you gotta love that climate control settings you can find up there you can of course find your ambient lighting settings at least if your Ionic 5 is equipped if you go with the SEL or limited trims you could check out your charging statistics up there of course as well there is of course in typical Hyundai fashion a voice memo system so you can record your voice and then play it back at a later date which is pretty cool quiet mode which uh, turns off the speakers in the back and limits the volume in the front to 25 so that the kids in the back can actually sleep which is pretty cool you can adjust your heated seats up there apparently which is pretty nice and you can of course check out your radio information as well and so when it comes to the sound system this is interesting you guys four speakers come standard which is kind of not a whole lot i gotta be honest but there is an available eight speaker bose sound system that uh comes with the limited we don't have it today but let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and i don't know let's test out our four speaker sound system that we do and you have here today <laughs> I don't know. It's not the best. Uh, the bass was actually decent, if I'm being honest, for a four speaker sound system, but uh, it's not the best. I feel like you really had to turn it up to really get any kind of clarity and I don't know. They could have done better with the sound systems on the Iotic. I'll just say that. But anyways, last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen at least is when you do put the Ionic in reverse, it will make a little bit of noise when you put it in reverse because this is an electric vehicle, so there's no exhaust drone. So people actually know that you're backing up, but you will get a rear view camera coming standard across the board and a surround view monitor if you were to go with a limited trim level only, which is always it's going to lead us into safety. And so to start, front side, side curtain airbags do come standard. Also a driver's knee airbag up front and a driver's seat center side airbag to kind of keep the driver and the passenger from colliding into each other this is something hyundai just started doing i absolutely love it i think that's pretty cool in the back you're gonna have latch aka lower anchors to have this for children for the rear car seats for your child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard across the board will include a four collision avoidance assist system blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert high beam assist lane keep assist lane following assist rear parking sensors a driver attention warning system adaptive cruise control and if you were to go with the sel or limited you will also get the highway driving assist Assist 2, which actually is kind of Hyundai's level 2 autonomous driving system, which is pretty cool as well. But overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Ionic 5, I don't think I actually mentioned this to you guys yet, but this is the fastest charging EV to date. It can actually charge from 10 to 80% in only 18 minutes. So that is pretty darn impressive in itself. I should have mentioned that at the beginning, I'm sorry, but excellent retro styling in this thing. You got America's best warranty. You have up to a $7,500 tax credit. You got three years of complimentary maintenance and you got the magnetic dashboard which we don't have today, but it is available on the Ionic 5, which I think is a super quirky little feature in itself. So overall, the only constructive criticism I can think of is maybe bumping up the sound systems for the bass trims and also the steering feel could be a little bit heavier in sport driving mode, kind of keep it competitive with the Tesla Model Y. But anyways, that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think of the Ionic 5 in the comments section below. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen. If you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to see YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.